welcome uh, one and all for the uh, webinar on the topic uh, battery storage technologies and its applications first of all i would like to thank skilling for uh, hosting this webinar then let's move on uh, i would like to give a brief overview <clears throat> about uh, today's discussion first i'll be discussing about uh, the need of storage technologies and different varieties of battery uh, storage type uh, storage and uh, the key terminologies used in battery storage system so then we'll move on to our understanding about equivalent circuit based modeling of battery storage system and the state of the art of uh, various battery storage system which are well established in the market today and various uh, applications based on uh, different uh, tentative parameters that we need to look into before we select any battery will be discussed also we will be discussing about key factors which are affecting lithium ion battery market especially with respect to the indian context and the global mineral reserves of lithium ion and battery cell manufacturing unit established across the world the capacity will be discussed moving on to the uh, further discussion will be uh, will be un understanding various advanced battery storage uh, technologies which are still under development but there is a lot of hope and we'll be giving a brief overview about the comparison of lithium and uh, sodium ion especially with respect to the indian context and a specific case study where we'll be discussing upon a application of a battery storage system for the dc microgrid uh, uh, will be discussed and also we'll be sharing some thoughts on various application of battery storage system uh, and finally we'll be discussing about the career path and job opportunities let's try to understand what is storage and why is it needed i was wondering and searching in google oxford definition says storage is a means of or action of storing something for future use it could be of anything could be your currency data or food stuff it could be anything whatever you are in excess now and you would like to store it for the future purpose that we call it as storage and of course it has a lot of relevance for the electrical engineering as well but before we understand how storage technologies has gained a lot of importance in today's uh, generation we'll try to understand what is the transformation which is happening at the electrical sector there are three major changes which is happening the first one is because of high carbon emission which is taking place due to the burning of high footprint carbon fuels to meet out the electricity demand we know thermal power plants they uh, they inject lot of uh, carbon emissions into the atmosphere and uh, apart from that if you look into our locomotive industry it it also contribute a lot for the carbon emission it is estimated from iea that for the year 2021 itself there will be 1.5 billion tons of carbon emission shooted into that atmosphere that's a very alarming figure and the second important transformation is the fossil fuels on the first go they are highly uh, you know uh, carbon and the other important drawback with this is they are not lasting forever they will be existing for probably five decades six decades coal may be existing for a little longer 10 decades and afterward afterwards what will happen to the energy requirement of the whole universe whole the whole the world so that is an important concern that uh, electrical engineers really need to cater towards and apart from that the growing electricity demand is also an important concern across the world it is estimated for the year 2021 itself there will be 4.6 percentage growth of electricity demand so there is a problem with respect to the fossil fuels it causes greenhouse effect and it is dangerous for our uh, existence itself and they are depleting on the other hand the problem is elevating due to the increase in the electricity demand so what is the solution for this the solution would be to look into the renewable energy growth renewable energy so renewable energy resources as we all know they are available free of cost as long as world exists renewable energy do exist and the renewable energy in investment has been considered to be the top cost priority for most of the countries across the world especially of, after the paris agreement 
where most of the industry, uh, you know, uh, uh, countries have pledged for maximum renewable penetration into their existing power system. You can see worldwide, there is significant increase in the installation of renewable energy sources, primarily led by wind and solar because they are abundantly available across the globe. India too is very much interested and on their toes to in, uh, install or penetrate maximum renewable, uh, uh, renewable energy sources into the system. For 2022 itself, there is a goal of 175 gigawatt of renewable energy penetration, which includes 100 gigawatt of PV and 60 gigawatt of wind. But renewable energy sources are not free of cost. They do also come with a lot of challenges. Let's try to understand one by one. The first important challenge with the renewable energy sources is they're highly unreliable. We really do not know when wind will be available. We really do not, do not know when there will be cloud over your PV panels. And due to this, there will be um, there will be a lot of concern with respect to the power extracted out of the renewables. You do not know for the next hour exactly this much amount of power will be available from the renewable energy sources. And because of this, there is a concern with respect to the economic dispatching as well. What is this economic dispatching? We all know that the conventional energy sources are optimized on a on a 15 minutes basis or a day ahead basis to to economically generate power at a lower cost. But with this highly intermittent renewable energy sources getting connected in parallel with the conventional power system, the thermal power plants will really struggle to meet out the uh, expected demand while operating at the economical manner. Also, the power quality concern is very much important because renewable energy sources need to be interfaced with the converters and converters would inject significant amount of harmonics into the system and power quality issues is need to be addressed. The stability issues. If you can see the important uh, parameter which really uh, need to be maintained constant throughout the operation of any stable power system is voltage and frequency. We all know this. We cannot allow the system voltage and frequency to fluctuate. It will hamper the uh, you know, smooth operation of uh, the entire power system. But having in place with the good amount of or a huge amount of renewable resources into the system, because of their intermittency in nature, there will be a lot of variation with respect to the voltage and frequency where they are getting interfaced into the power system. So we need to really concern about the voltage and frequency stability. And what about the grid codes? Some of the grid codes really interested to ensure that the renewable energy sources still getting connected into the system whenever there is a disturbance happening, maybe due to the fault or maybe switching off a huge loads, the renewable energy sources need to be intact with the grid. But the concern with some of the renewable energy sources, such as a doubly fed induction generator based wind system, they suffer from poor fault rate through condition. That's altogether a different research area. I'll not dig into it, but that is a, an important challenge or a research area that wanted to really work on it. What about the protection and safety? The renewable energy sources may really disturb the operation of uh, the relays. They, they may uh, provoke the re relays to operate when it is not uh, required, and they may stop the relay to operate when it is really a need of the hour. So the protection is very important concern. And the, another important concern with respect to this uh, renewable energy penetration is they may cause safety hazard in terms of uh, injecting power when there is a maintenance happening, maybe due to the unintentional air landing type of operation, they may you know, cause life threat to some, uh, some operator. And government policies need to be uh, worked out to uh, welcome maximum renewable energy sources into the system. These are some of the challenges associated with renewable energy sources. And how does the storage system would help? Yes, storage can really make a difference. It can help us to absorb the power when there is a huge generation happening with respect to the renewable resources, thereby we are not wasting the green energy which is available with us and storing it when it is in excess and releasing it when there is a lack of renewable resources. The storage really can help us to maintain the voltage and frequency of a system and the reliability issues can be addressed. So the storage will certainly make a difference. And here I'll be displaying, uh, I've displayed the various types of storage system. The first one is compressed air storage. What we do is we'll compress the air 
and the energy which is stored in this compressed air will be released when there is a requirement at the load side. And the second type is pump storage hydroelectricity. Where what we do is we generate electricity out of uh, uh, the head, high head in the hydroelectric power station. And if suppose it is a off peak hour, what we do is we will pump back the uh, energy, uh, the water back to the head using the same electricity which was generated earlier. And we, we can reuse that water whenever there is a requirement or if there is a peak demand happening. So that's how we can store this uh, uh, you know, hydro uh, energy in, the, in terms of increasing its potential. And the third important uh, storage system which is used is flywheel, where we store the, we make use of the you know, mass of uh, rotating wheel to generate electricity when there is a requirement. And the fourth important, or this is what uh, we are mainly discussing in this today's topic, the battery storage, which stores energy in the form of a chemical form. And uh, the another important uh, technology, which has gained a lot of importance in uh, recent days is supercapacitors, which has its significance in terms of cater to the need of a high power requirement. It's a high power density device. And uh, the superconducting magnetic energy storage is another important type of bat uh, storage system, which stores energy in the form of magnetic field and release it whenever it's required. And the hydrogen storage is also gaining a lot of importance, which stores energy in the form of gas and releasing it whenever it is required. And uh, these are different types of storage units, which are primarily used across the world. And uh, let's try to understand the battery storage system, initially with the help of some key terminologies. The first terminology is anode. Anode means it's a negative electrode and it is rich in terms of electrons. It, it supplies electrons. Cathode, which is capable of absorbing electrons and it's a positive electrode. Then the third terminology is a charge capacity, which is uh, expressed as the quantity of electricity which can be delivered by the cell or the battery. And it is usually expressed in terms of AH or ampere hour. You might have gone to the market and uh, certainly uh, uh, you, you would have asked for specification of a battery. The typical specification will be expressed, the capacity will be expressed in terms of AH. What it means is how much current uh, this battery can provide and for what duration. A means current, H means hour, ampere hour, how much would be the capacity of a battery in terms of meeting out to the load demand for what duration. That's what is expressed in terms of charge capacity. And cell, cell is a basic fundamental unit of any battery uh, battery. So this cell is a electromagnetic electrochemical unit that is used to uh, convert chemical energy into electrical energy and electrical energy back into chemical energy. It consists of anode, cathode, and electrolyte. Anode is usually made up of a metal, and cathode is usually made up of a metal oxide. And electrolyte could be either made up of uh, a base, uh, acid, or a salt even. For lithium batteries, we are going for salt. For lead acid batteries, we are going for acid. So it depends upon a different kind of application. So battery, battery is nothing but a combination of uh, cells in different manners, whether in series or parallel manner, to achieve the desired capacity. And another important uh, terminology, which is widely seen, is C rate. C rate is constant charging or discharging rate. And how do we understand this charge rate or uh, C rate of a battery? Let us example, for example, let's consider 1C. What this 1C means, suppose if we have a battery of 65 ampere hour uh, charge capacity, then if we consider it is to be operating at C rate of 1C, it means it can able to discharge 65 amps of current for one hour. Let's try to understand the C rate for 10C. 10C, if the number is increased, 10C means it can able to cater to the requirement of 650 amps of load, 65 into 10, 650 amps of load. If you increase the current, the time would decrease. The more the battery is asked to discharge, the less amount of time it can discharge. That means now it can able to discharge, earlier it used to be discharged for 60 minutes. Now it can discharge up to six minutes only. That, let's try to understand in a different way, in another, with another example. C by 10, 
what is c by 10 now you are asking battery to discharge current at 6.5 amps constant uh, uh, capacity for and the discharge time would be 10 hours i hope this is clarified so this is very important and uh, as i i mean one important thing which also be need, uh, noted is this may not be an exact re linear relationship a 10c charging or a discharging it can last it cannot last it may not last up to 6 minutes the battery can exist exhaust uh, before 6 minutes itself it may you know exhaust its entire charge capacity by 5 or 5 and a half minutes whereas if you are slowly discharging maybe at c by 10 rate it may discharge even more than 10 hours it could be 10.5 hours or whatever it is so this is an important see right because for a particular application suppose you are considering electric vehicle you cannot even wait for at a charging station for 10 hours to go from one place to another place you really want your battery to get charged as soon as possible so you need to pick up such kind of battery which can able to charge and discharge at that speed so that speed of charging and discharge is expressed in terms of its capacity in terms of c rate so 10c is what i have mentioned here but practically i mean lithium batteries is the best which is seen in nowadays uh, market and it can go up to 2c or tesla says they have manufactured up to 4c capacity so this is what is been seen in the in the present day market so the electrolyte it's a medium by means the charging and discharging take place so let's try to understand what is energy capacity is energy capacity is voltage rating of a battery multiplied by its charge capacity it is usually expressed in terms of watt hour or kilowatt hour and another important terminology is state of the charge or soc of the battery it is expressed as percentage of its rated capacity you might have seen in your mobile phones and all it says the battery capacity uh, it shows 50% 30% that means it is displaying the soc of that particular battery at a particular instant so this is very important parameter and temperature effect of course batteries life really get degrades if you are operating at extreme uh, temperature conditions either low or high and what is dod with this depth of discharge it is just a complementary of soc so suppose a battery soc is 20 percentage then the dod would be expressed in terms of its uh, uh, its capacity which is 80 percentage 100 minus 20 which is 80 percentage so let's try to understand what is the need of going for series and parallel combination of cells now we have understood what is cell which is a fundamental unit of any battery now let us try to you know uh, understand the battery in in terms of uh, its capacity while we go for series or parallel combination in series combination we connect a negative electrode to the positive electrode and we make a series combination why do we do that we, we if we have to increase the voltage capacity of a particular battery then we go for a series combination whereas the charge capacity remains unaltered suppose let us say a particular cell is rated at 2 volts and 10 ampere hour if you make a combination of a battery with three series uh, uh, three cells of such identical combination then the entire battery capacity would be 6 volt and and 10 ampere hour itself let's try to understand with the help of you know parallel combination of cells suppose if i take the same figure 2 volt and 10 ampere hour now in the parallel combination the voltage remains same just remember your series and parallel electric circuit whereas the charge capacity would now increase now in this particular example the total capacity of the battery is 2 volt and 50 ampere hour if you just take head by head comparison then the entire energy capacity of a, a battery whether you go for series or parallel combination will not be changed in the series combination we are increasing the voltage whereas in the parallel combination we are increasing the uh, charge capacity but the energy uh, capacity which is a combination of voltage and charge capacity will remain unaltered whereas it depends upon the application like if you have to go for high voltage rating then you have to go for series combination and once you reach that series combination series capacity or the voltage uh, requirement then you go for parallel combination of cells so here i have given a brief uh, i want to i would like to give a brief overview about how a typical uh, battery cell would function as i already mentioned a battery consists of a uh, you know, negative electrode and a positive electrode then it is separated by a separator this separator would 
help us to avoid the self discharge that means the short circuit between negative electrode and positive electrode is avoided whereas it is a good conductor for passing through the uh, ions so what happens during a battery cell operation let's take an instance of discharging during a discharging process the negative electrode or which is which we call it as anode during the discharging process makes make sure that the elect, uh, the chemical potential within this negative electrode would ensure that an electron would be released from the current collector which is attached to this negative electrode the current collector could be either made up of uh, copper or aluminum this current collector would release the electron which is coming from the negative electrode and passes it to the positive electrode or cathode via the load if there is an external circuit the load would uh, via the means of the load the electron would be flowing that means a useful work can be done this is what we call it as discharging what happens and uh, what happens during the charging process is opposite during the charging process the electron would now flow from the positive electrode via the load to the negative electrode and what is happening at the uh, chemical side during chemical side uh, the negative electrode would release a positive ion or cation which is flowing via the meaning medium of separator to the positive electrode electron will be released and a positive ion will be released during discharging from the negative electrode side point of view and electron will be absorbed and positive ion would be absorbed at the cathode side during the discharge process it happens in a reverse manner during the charging process